Surf's up. We obviously failed the opening stage spectacularly. Putting Heroic instead of Eternal Fire here would have been the play. And I want to say that I'm not going to make the same mistake again. There's no chance. Because I am going to take this Pick'ems completely seriously. I'm going to go a different route in terms of my strategy. And what that strategy entails is not just putting the teams that I think are best necessarily. I'm going to play out the entire bracket every single matchup. And you guys are going to see that I have used logic and reasoning and deduction skills to put together the best possible bracket, which will, in fact, save your pickums. So, yes, we are going through the entire Majors IM bracket, and I'm going through every single one. If you want to just skip to the end of the video to see my picks, you can do just that, but I'm going to go through every single one right here. Okay, first up, we got FaZe versus Heroic. I think that FaZe is going to be coming out on top here. I uh, feel like... Heroic, they've been good at a handful of maps, uh, but I and I feel like they're a strong team. I think that we'll but we'll play it out before we even make an assumption that they're just going to make it through. We're going to play through the whole bracket. OK, this is going to be a longer pick em video because I'm working through this game by game. We got Team Spirit versus Cloud9. And one thing is that we all know the Spirit's weakness right now in the map pool is Vertigo. Cloud9 banned Vertigo. This is Spirit all day. Vitality versus Eternal Fire. This could be a little bit of a trap game for Vitality, who are slow to start sometimes. At Katowice, they obviously bombed out of that tournament. Mezzi has been looking like he is in worse and worse form every single game. But I started seeing some of the cracks in Eternal Fire's game. They do seemingly have some weak links. There are players on the team that sometimes fall off a little bit. Wycadia is not playing as well as he was coming into the event and it seems like the nerves have him there's these ups and there's these downs for him but another thing is that there's been a lot of pressure on vitality too i mean this team obviously has incredibly high expectations mezzi knows he's been playing pretty badly and i think that might weigh on him just a little bit especially in the bo1 where eternal fire they just came off winning a 3-2 matchup versus a saw team but they barely got through a barrel they barely not saw that is they barely got through from uh, by making it through Actually, they did. They did beat them. Yeah, they beat them in the 2-1 matchup. So, yeah, I think Vit I think Eternal Fire are a good team. Really solid, but I got Vitality in the first one. Mal's ecstatic. This is one where you can actually call for an upset here, but I just think player quality is a little bit too high on Mao. Shuhei, better overall leader. And for the side of Mao's, I think sometimes you worry about Torzi in terms of, is he a strong enough opper? But you say that against the best teams in the world, not against a team like Ecstatic. First upset that I'm going to be predicting will be Complexity versus Pain. I think that Complexity will fall to Pain. I think that this is a trap game for them where in a domestic matchup, Pain won probably a little bit more familiarity with Complexity, but Pain are just coming off of playing every single day of the Challenger stage. And Complexity, I already can sense the excuses. I already know that they're going to come into it and say a little bit of a cold start for us on this first day. Oh no, we're really worried about things. So I'm going to go with Payne, who have, to me, the best in-game leader in Brazil right now, Big Uzera. VP versus Imperial, I'm going to be going with VP in this one. VP just overall have a really strong game. I don't see really Imperial having any significant edge in the map pool. If... Um, Say this goes to like an Anubis or something weird like that. I think VP's got him covered. I think VP got him covered in just so many different directions right now. I think this might go to Mirage, which maybe is probably the only way that Imperial do win this one. If it does, I'm going to still trust in VP. I think they got one of the best players on Mirage in the world in Flit. So I think they're fine there. Navi versus the Mongols. Another kind of scary game right now. I think Navi are a team that they're kind of just held together with strings sometimes. That they're a team of all these people, all these people from all these different directions. And when they have a lot of reps under their belt, they look really good. But they, the thing is that I do think that Wonderful is good enough that even if they have a little bit of a, a slow start against the Mongols, I think they're going to be just good enough in this one. The one thing that's a little bit curious about this game, though, is that both these teams ban Vertigo. So, yeah, we're getting into map veto stuff a little bit on this as well. So that actually makes this map pool a little bit weird. And usually as a higher seed, you want to ban last. But I don't think that there's going to be any advantage for Navi in banning last in this one because they might just get, if they just get checked all the way to the end and Mongols leave Vertigo, I think I think Mongols should just float Vertigo to the very end in this. And this could lead to another big upset. Um, so this is one I might come back to. I might come back to this one and think about it a little bit more because Mongols, they're good. But I will say this. I, I don't think Mongols have necessarily the player quality across the board. Um, they, de they definitely can have some more cohesion than Navi, though. So I'm a little worried about them. G2 Furia. Furia only made it by because Fallen had a throwback performance in the last day against Saw, where Saw was losing their composure 
on that that final day of the opening stage and so i'm gonna take g2 there so second round matchups phase pain i'm gonna stick with pain i'm gonna stick with phase in this one it's spirit g2 uh, and again, this is a this is a game where maybe you think like G two could they force the veto into some kind of weird position for for this one? But I I don't think that they can ban. I don't think they could they want to safely play this down to Vertigo against Spirit because they're not too happy about their Vertigo either. So I'm gonna play I'm gonna have Spirit over G two in this one. Vitality Navi. Uh, this is now a little bit more comfort for both of these teams. Vitality again can be slow to start, but Zaiwu just so far and by and away the best player. <sighs> I think that Vitality is susceptible to losses, but I don't think it's yet. I don't think in these in these games it's gonna happen just yet. But I'm gonna do another upset based off the Val seating. I think VP will be beating Mao's there. I think VP will be punching it into the 2-0 spot right there. And then we're going to get into the O1s. Complexity versus Furia. Yeah, I think that Furia right now, because of the hot start from day one, they're going to stay on top. I, I just kind of like sense the complexity excuses rolling out for me. And I'm I'm really disappointed that I'm predicting the excuses of like, oh, yeah, it's a slow start. You know, the, the legend stage buff or whatever it is, you know, second like or, or you play through the opening stage buff. That's really like it's almost like if you come into the legend stage, you're coming in a little bit cold, but it's like. Nah, complexity, you should just be, like, warmed up, and you should be the better team if you're in this stage, but, I mean, that's just valve seeding for you. I mean, I don't even know how complexity really made it when they went 3-1 in the America's RMR, and Fury actually went 3-0, they beat them, and right now, uh, despite the fact that Fury, I think, is weaker than a lot of these teams out here, I don't think they're weaker than complexity. Uh, they beat them head-to-head -head in the America's RMR. Heroic versus the Mongols. I'll take Heroic in this one. Uh, Cloud9 versus Imperial. I'll be going with a uh, Cloud9 team that, to me, like Imperial thrive because they have some pretty good teamwork. Um, I think this is a game to be worried about if you're a Cloud9 fan. But overall, I, I will say, actually, you know what? Nah, we're 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 get, actually, you know what? Imperial have really impressed me. Imperial have looked really, really good, but they barely made it through. Whereas Cloud9 did 3-0, and I feel like they probably have thought about their opponents enough that I, I I want to, in isolation, kind of think of Imperial as a really good team. And they are. They're, they're not going 0-3 for me, but they're not going to win this one. Eternal Fire versus Ecstatic. Uh, I'll be going with... I think Eternal Fire has lost some of their form, and Ecstatic has been weirdly impressive. But I'm going to go with kind of reverting to the norm to regressing to the mean and i think that eternal fire is just going to edge this one out a little bit too so phase clan vp very scary game for phase clan but i i just i simply pin phase as one of the teams that can win this whole thing and so i'm going to go with phase over vp in this spirit vitality yeah i'll be going with spirit and i think that they're going to be my 3-0 teams so let's just put that back in like that's not it took a long time to say it a lot of waffling to get to the point where i'm just basically saying that yes Two teams that many people are putting as 3-0 are going to make it to 3-0. Ah, oh, but VP, though. Ooh, VP, they're so scary, aren't they? They are so scary. They are terrifying. They are a really frightening team for a team like FaZe. Man. Man, best player in the server. Damn. Damn, it's tough. It's tough to put that. Like, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to be real. I'm not entirely sure with that one. But I think Spirit is comfortably the best team right now. So I will put Spirit in. It almost is just one of those things also where you just feel foolish if you don't put FaZe. Because there is a chance also VP lose early on here to um, to Maus. Like, this is, not an, this is not an unlosable game for them. And so even though I'm trying to play the whole bracket out, I'm also thinking like... Mouse could beat VP. There, that's that's not impossible. So yeah, I'm gonna just put these two, and I do think that Phase would beat VP in a BO3, but I also think that VP have a little bit more of a chance to be upset than Phase do, and so it's more likely that Phase will be there in this third round matchup. Uh, Spirit over Vitality already explained. I just think that they're a better team. I think like with with Spirit, you would probably think that they could lose to Vitality if they only relied on Donk, but Shiro has been putting up insane MVP level numbers too on that team. And on top of that, I just think that even though everybody's going to be anti-stratting Spirit really hard, I feel like Mezzi might be the weakest player in the server, roll for roll. Uh, I feel like Flames also is a bit inconsistent, whereas people like Zontix, very understanding of their role. Uh, Magix, Magix might be also one of the weaker players roll for roll in this team, but he's still like, like that's crazy to say that. Magix is one of the weaker players in this matchup roll for roll, and he's still very darn good. So I'm going to keep him.
G2 over Pain, Mao's over Furia, Navi, Eternal Fire. A little bit worrying for this one, but the thing is that um, Navi banning out Vertigo gives them a huge edge in this veto. I, I kind of would have wanted to give Eternal Fire the edge here, but Eternal Fire always go to picking Vertigo, and I think that Navi, by banning it, is just taking away one of the big win conditions there. Now, Heroic versus Cloud9. This is where it's really awkward for a team like a team like Cloud9 who don't have a real primary opper because Nikodos has been one of the like he's been really real weirdly good on T sides, but he also he also is a primary opper. And so he is the best opper in the server, unfortunately, for heroic's sake. Uh or for for Cloud9's sake. And so for heroic, they also ban out Inferno, which Cloud9 will kind of sometimes play into a little bit and so i think heroic actually will take this over cloud nine uh, i feel like they yeah i just feel like their teamwork is improving day by day i think the calling overall in mid rounds late rounds should be a little bit better for c9 and i do think the experience for c9 could take them over the edge but in a series like i think of the maps and what's going to come up in this one and i think like mirage inferno nuke as strong possibilities in this one because c9 don't play vertigo heroic actually no no no. i'm sorry heroic ban inferno heroic ban inferno so inferno won't come up so it might be like kind of an ancient or something and i just feel like i've never really been totally confident in cloud nine's ancient either whereas heroic i'm a little bit i like it a little bit more Imperial Mongol, and so yeah, I will be picking them there. Imperial Mongols, I'm gonna go Imperial there. I uh, feel actually, you know what? Yeah, I think this is where Imperial is right, road ends. I think Mongols have actually shown me a little bit more in terms of structure, retake, potential. The individual players on Imperial have been better though. So this is kind of like, do you value the team a little bit more of Mongols, or do you value the players of Imperial? Because I'm I'm being serious. Like Phelps and Henny have been beasts. They have been so damn good, and so. This is one where, this is really important too, unfortunately. It's really for your O3 pick. Are you thinking it's Imperial or Mongols? And, man, Imperial kind of skated by in that previous stage because of their BO1 win versus Ents. It helped them out a lot, whereas Mongols were a BO3 team. So, I, yeah, again, I'll be taking Mongols in a full series. And now, Complexity versus Ecstatic. I think this is where I just get my heart broken completely. You all know that I'm huge. I'm a huge Complexity fan, but... I just, I just, for whatever reason, I just feel like the whole, they're just going to find an excuse here, and I just feel like they're not going to come out in full force. I think Elise is going to actually end up, end up in this tournament with like a t 10 highest rating at the major, like top 10, but I just feel like the team's going to let him down in a multitude of ways, and I'm just really, I'm not happy to say that, but at least they're going to probably make it to the next major, because there's seven slots now for the Americas. Now, Vitality Maus, this is where actually I think I'm going to see, I'm going to see a couple upsets here, Okay. I'm going to see one upset here with Mao's over Vitality. I actually have begun to rate them as a team a little bit better in terms of structure. Um, and I think roll for roll, I feel like Yimpak clears Mezzi. It's not even close. Shuhei actually for Apex, pretty, pretty even, even bout right there. Uh, Spinks right now for, say, someone like Brolin. I would have I wanted to say Spinks in a lot of cases here, but I actually, I actually want to just bring this up. Uh, I think Spinks... As an individual in the last three months has been all right like let's look at him 2024 so far he's been good but it's not exact it's not exactly the numbers I expect and they haven't even really played top opposition it's like good but it's kind of it's just kind of inconsistent for me these are pretty good numbers but then you kind of start seeing that they're so he's sort of just whomping on teams that like Astralis he loses to Cloud9, kind of whomped on Ents again. It's kind of a, in a weird way, this is a very limited sample size in terms of literally the teams they played. They played Heroic twice, Astralis twice, they played Ents twice, and I just feel like they haven't been tested like a team by a team like Mouse. And also his rating is really inflated because of this game versus OG too. So he's inflated his ranking against Ents and OG. So I'm I'm gonna go uh, yeah that's kind of my first upset here it seems a little crazy but I'm gonna be picking Maus over them VP I will be taking over Navi I think overall they're the better team G2 I will be taking over Heroic actually you know what no we're gonna go with Heroic I actually rate Heroic really highly here I do rate Heroic really highly um I rate I think Heroic by banning Inferno which they do they're taking away a big win condition from G2 and then Finally, I think that now one, two games, Cloud9 over Ecstatic for sure. EF, I will, uh, I'll take them over Furia. I think they're going to win on Vertigo. And I think they can, hmm, winning other maps is going to be where it's a little bit tough for them. But 
Either way, I'm not really sure either of these teams are making it through, but I'm still just playing out the bracket. So EF Furia here, I'm going to take that. And Pain, I will take Pain over the Mongols. Uh, they've just been, they've just really shot up for me in terms of name value. Even if they go the other way, I don't really think this changes my preds at all because you see that G2 will play Furia regard or G2 is playing Eternal Fire in the next round regardless, and I will be taking G2. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just what is this other matchup? And it always actually does always end up with Navi C9, and then it always ends up with Vitality versus Pain. And I feel like Vitality even being here is weird. So Vitality, yeah, I'm going to have them as advancing 3-2. And I'm going to have C9 Navi is really the only decision here. But you're going to look at this. My 3-0 teams are Phase and Spirit. My 0-3 teams are Imperial and Complexity. My advancing teams are VP, Heroic, Mouse, Vitality, Navi, G2. With the one possible change is Cloud9 over them. So let me go back to that really quickly here. Let me go back to the actual game, and I'll show you guys where my picks are. Imperial, Complexity, and the sure, more sure things, VP, G2, G2 Vitality, Maus, Heroic, and that last spot is Navi or Cloud9. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. For whatever reason, I feel like Cloud9 have better... I do think that... Well, it's not for whatever reason. I think the better teamwork is with Cloud9... Not having an opera is going to hurt them tremendously, but then you're relying on Wonderful to be a difference maker in multiple high-pressure games in a row. And I'm just not sure right now that the rest of Navi has it in them because I think role for role, some of the players on Cloud9 are really overperforming right now. I think Perfecto is playing some of the best CS he has played so far. Hobbit has actually been a monster. Electronic flat out just should be the best player in the server if not for Wonderful. And then Boomich has been calling very well mid-rounds. I think I've been really impressed with him. And yeah, Axile, probably the weak link here. But then I look at a team like Navi, and I think of actually their individuals and their performances. LXCB, definitely probably the weakest player in the server overall. I think of I think of uh, Ema, still like very inconsistent. And in a higher pressure game like this, I, I think I'm a little bit worried about him too. Um, JL, not really supposed to be a superstar, really hasn't been for them. Uh, I feel like... Then it comes down to just a bit. I feel like he's been very wishy-washy with this team also. Very inconsistent. I'm going to go with Cloud9 because even though even though Navi have had this really stoic vibe to them, they've been, they actually have been one of the longest standing five-man rosters together. I'm going to go with Cloud9 over them. This might come back to bite me and people might be like, I know, people are going to be like freaking out. Like, how do you pick Cloud9 when they don't even have an opera? Well, I just did. And these are my pickums. Tread lightly here. I think the biggest swaps to possibly make would have been, say, putting a team like... I, I think you're just kind of... The, the way that this changes for a lot of people is Navi or Cloud9. And then, will you go on a gamble and pick a team like VP over FaZe? Like, this is... This, to me, is the only realistic change for me after going through the entire bracket. And things can change. The bracket can get really weird. It can get really wonky. But I am going to be sticking with this one because I just worked through the entire thing. And these are my picks. This is the only one. This is the only, only one. But I believe in the Frozen move. I believe in Kerrigan. I believe in FaZe right now. So I'm just going to submit these. As always, guys, being toxic is a choice. Be sure to also follow the stream. Oh, my God. I've been co-streaming the whole thing on Twitch. So be sure to follow that. Boom. As always, being toxic is a choice.